This DIY is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey guys, what is up? Happy Friday. Welcome back to the DIY Designer. For those of you that are new, my name is Orly. I'm so glad that you found me. And for those of you that are not new, I love you. Thank you for being here for another one. All of you guys picked a good day to stop by. Mm, it's a good day. So if you have not been under a rock, then you have seen on Instagram this ad that has been served to everybody and their mother. It's these like glitter gummy rainbow slides. They're so amazing. Yet when you click shop now, they're nowhere to be found. But I figured out how to DIY them. They are identical. I can't wait for you guys to see the finished product at the end of the video. They really came out perfectly. My daughter. <laughs> Um, guys, I just want to thank real quick today's sponsor Skillshare for making this one possible. I've been using Skillshare in a totally different way in the last like three weeks. Instead of doing one course, I've been kind of popping in on random different courses. And the one that I did over the weekend was this amazing flower course. There's this guy who's from New Zealand. He has a flower shop down in Venice and he looks at flowers as an art form. He teaches you the proper way to make bouquets, floral arrangements for your home, and even these big like art installations, whether they can be attached to some lights with dried flowers and they can be permanent art in your home. I got so inspired. I made two arrangements for my home. So it was such a fun course and I just love having that ability to pop in because I have that premium membership. So if you guys want that membership, remember the first thousand people that click the link in my description will get two months free of Skillshare Premium. It is such a good deal. And if you miss the thousand, it's still only $10 a month for every course. And you can just pop in and out like I'm doing. So I hope that you guys head over there, click that link right now and um, let's do materials because this DIY, this. DIY. They're zoomed in on me, aren't you? <laughs> yes, very much. <laughs> <laughs> Materials. All right, so I'm going to take you through my full process because there are some things that I learned towards the end that I wish I had done here in the beginning. One thing that you definitely have to do is start cutting your paracord into strips. My shoe was smaller at the front than it was in the back, so I'm not able to just pre-cut all of my pieces. I kind of have to work section by section. So what I did is I lined up my paracord, giving myself about a half inch overlap on either side. It just gives you a little bit of safety and you're gonna want that. Now paracord will kind of unravel if you don't seal it. You can either seal it with a flame or you can seal it with your Mod Podge, which you'll see me do uh, in a couple of minutes. I'm starting with just one of my pieces, right? I obviously am making my shoes mirror themselves. So for every color I'm doing, I'm doing two, one for the right shoe and one for the left. It's really important that you have two separate working spaces. One space where you're adding your Mod Podge and one space where you're adding your glitter. If you mix the spaces together, you're going to end up with a lot of wasted glitter that's going to get stuck to the paper and not be able to be reused. So what I'm doing is just taking my Mod Podge, covering the entire piece, putting it over to another uh, magazine where I'm doing my glitter, and then sprinkling a hefty amount of glitter. Obviously, you can see there's a ton of excess and I want to save all that glitter. So fold your magazine in half, kind of, you know, point in making it into like a V, and then you're just going to funnel it right back into the tube. You're literally going to go from like an empty tube to a full tube to an empty tube to a full tube. So this is a really important step in making sure that you have enough glitter. Now I'm moving on to my next one. Again, cutting each piece as I go. And you can see here, I decided to just dip it directly in the Mod Podge. What that's going to do is seal up not only the little uh, ropes that are inside of the nylon cording, but it's going to kind of fuse it to the nylon cording itself. That way it won't start to shrink and unravel. So sealing up those ends are really important. Same exact thing here, obviously on one side, I'm adding my Mod Podge, on the other side, I'm adding my glitter, and then I'm always putting my glitter back into each container so that I can do uh, multiple coats if need be. Now you can see on some of these lighter colors, the color is really translucent. Um, you're gonna need to do a few coats on the colors that don't have as much of a kick. You can see there the difference between like the purple and the fuchsia versus the yellow and the light green and the light blue. So what I'm doing is multiple coats here. I'm going back in and I'm taking them once they've dried. That's that's super important. You want to let the entire coat first coat dry. Otherwise, when you go on and do your second coat, you're just going to kind of brush off your glitter as opposed to add a second coat to it. So anything that needs a double coat, do that. Once you're done, you kind of want to go in and just spot treat it. Take a look at anything that looks like there's bald spots. Maybe you're seeing a little bit of the white. And once that's done, you're going to seal the entire thing with a coat of Mod Podge. So 
Do you see on the shoe all the way around the base, there's that kind of mixed color piece? Well, I wanted to do that as well. So what I did is I just mixed a little bit of every single color into a bowl. And obviously this piece I measured, it's already long enough to go all the way around plus a few inches for good measure. And now you can see, I've just got a big bowl with my mixed colors and I'm doing the same thing. Go through with one coat, let that dry, add a second coat of Mod Podge and do another coat of glitter and then just seal it. The whole thing, each of these have now been sealed with one final coat of Mod Podge so that it won't flake off. Now it's time to actually glue them on. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my E6000 and I'm starting with that first one that's gonna go all the way around. Grab the piece and find the center so that you're guaranteed to be centered and start in the front. Lay it down in the front and just kind of use your fingers to push it all into place. I didn't add my glue to the back yet, so now I'm adding my glue to the back. What I'm gonna do is start off with one piece and cut it right at the center. These are Puma slides, so I'm just finding the middle of the word. Just worked out easily like that for me and cutting the first one. Now I'm taking the other one and lining it up and you can see I made it just a tiny bit too big. It kind of creates a little gap. So I cut off just like an eighth of an inch until it seams up perfectly. Add in a little bit more glue and you're gonna really wanna push these together and lay them flat so that you can't even see that seam. I do end up going in with a tiny bit of Mod Podge to go over the seam with some more glitter. That way it hides it completely and you never even know it was there. But even this on its own is really cool looking, like just that. Now, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I wanted to go in and clean everything up. So I'm taking sort of a dull X-Acto knife and just scraping off any of the excess glue that's bubbled up or little bits of glitter that are getting stuck. You just wanna clean it up. So now I'm doing each of the pieces. And this is where I really learned something that I wish I had done from the beginning. So I'll explain the first thing. You wanna take your piece and you wanna line it up. Just take a look at each piece and see where you notice like the best starting point. Really, it's just a matter of like, is it a really strong saturation of glitter? Is it really clean? Like whatever, I mean, it's really arbitrary how you pick it. But what I realized is it works really well to cut it on an angle, following the angle of the shoe. It's a very slight angle, but it really makes all the difference in having it lay flat against that one piece that's running all the way around the shoe. So you kinda wanna line it up, look at the slight angle, and then cut it on that angle. Now, when you do your glue, you do one row of glue on the part of the shoe, and then you wanna do a teeny bit of extra glue actually on the color before it. That's gonna allow us to sandwich them together so that there's no gaps in between each color and each row. So you can see now I'm laying it down right into the edge, kind of push it into the edge. Use your two fingers to push in the ends and use your index and thumb to squeeze them together. I recommend holding it for at least 20 or 30 seconds until it sets up and you can see it kind of pushes into the corners there. Now we move on to the next color. Again, line it up and you can see what I'm doing is I'm kind of putting my scissors while it's lined up because that's how I'm actually able to see that slight angle. It really does make a big difference. So take your time in lining it up again. Lay one side down, you have a starting point, so now you know where you need to cut your other side. Put your scissors there, kind of find your angle and cut. You're gonna need some pretty sharp scissors for this because you're dealing with not only the paracord, but a couple coats of Mod Podge and glitter. So again, you just wanna make sure to take your time, hold everything in place for at least 20 seconds before you move on. Now, there is something that I learned and this made a huge difference. Do you see how that green one is laying much more flat? It's actually like rounded and indented in a really soft way. And what I realized with this one is that it makes all the difference in the world to actually thin out the very edge of the rope where it meets our other like glitter one that's going all the way around. So what I did is I peeled up all the ones that were already glued before they dried. And I'm sort of shaving off the edge. I'm like thinning out the very bottom by cutting it off the backside where we're not seeing it. So by trimming it off the backside, what it does is it thins out the overall thickness of the rope so that it can lay much more flat. And it really does give the illusion that it's like coming out from that one, uh, you know, mixed color one that's going all the way around. It allows it to hug the shoe, lay flat because it's so much thinner at that point. So I wish I had thought of this from the very beginning. I would have done it from the very beginning and I think it would have made a big difference, but it's okay. You learn as you go. You guys know. This is basically it guys, I've got a couple more colors to do and I'm done.